All right, so it seems like we are pretty much, it, it's pretty much as if like the initial hunch was right, or as we were pretty much saying that there's taking so much effort and that we didn't even, fa we failed to clear this high fully. We only took liquidity and that it's taking so much effort to continue higher that although we want this, right, there is the option. I mean, there is a possibility that it can just go from here just because it's taking too much effort for it to come up. So eventually once it pops, it's about to just melt, right? Just like your USD, same thing, right? So we wanted, you know, a previous high to be topped on either DXY or EU, whichever one came first. But remember, we're trading what we see, not what we want. And although we want it to come here, that doesn't mean that we sell, even if it's in a premium, that doesn't mean we sell here because we got to understand narrative before anything and we're long-term bullish on EU, GU, um, you know, your our USD pairs, you know, and vice versa for UCAD and UCHF, etc. So although it's at a premium, that doesn't mean sell because we want this, right? We have to acknowledge the fact that this is taking so much effort, right? That it's pretty much any downside move is not sustaining itself. So eventually it's going to pop and we're going to see that high taken out. We're going to see this high taken out. And this is what I've been waiting for, for pretty much since March. All right. So now it's, it's really given us, you know, the full confirmation that it wants to continue higher. We have bullish volume supporting us, right? Honestly, volume here isn't going to say much, but just by looking at momentum itself, you can see it, right? We can see it pretty much a bullish closure that closed above one, two, five, six, seven, like above eight to nine candles. And then the only, the, you know, the, the reaction from Monday was only a recovery of that to then take it for Tuesday and Wednesday's plays. Um, but primarily today, right? we're looking at this, right? I showed you guys in the markups pretty much, right? Although we, we broke structure here, Right, so this is my uh, lower high, I mean higher low, I'm sorry. So as soon as I saw that break, I was like, although we're bullish, right? I want bullishness, but we have to play based off what's given. So I, I forgot what exactly this, this setup was. Oh yes, right here. So I was pretty much, you know, looking here I was pretty much observing that this previous wick took out this previous high here. So that's now a point of reference. So when I was looking at the four minute, three minute, right? You can see that the open is there. The four minute open. Oh, my keyboard is... All right, what the f I don't know why that did that. Uh, okay, so. All right, that was a four minute, five minute. All right, so these are my two POIs. Those are my two original POIs. So as soon as we started reaching here, all right, this is the aggressive entry. Whereas I'm seeing bullish volume stall. But after the initial reaction, right we got that you can consider this a scalping bos we had an upside move on diminishing volume right you use the wick trick because you see this took out the previous wick all right just so i can show you all right this previous wick took out that previous wick i mean this wick took out this previous wick and then gave a reaction that broke a scalping BOS. We now come back up on diminishing volume, right? POI, right? And you can take this trade however you want. Obviously, you guys know I, I hate, you know, going below two to three pips. <clears throat> so that's my that's my play there. 
and now we got the official break of structure here All right i'll consider that a, a minor i don't want to consider that an intraday i'd consider this an intraday i consider this another scalp structure but you know as soon as this happens right we now have the bearish reaction that we want um our poi is initially here because this is now i guess a five minute inefficiency fill yes it is right there and this was the conservative entry that i took so I, I i took it on two different accounts this was the more aggressive one and this is the more conservative one so as soon as i've seen this fat bearish candle although we haven't broke structure yet yo fuck all right they're good um so as soon as they as soon as i saw this fat bearish closure I'm like, yes, we haven't broken previous structure yet, but this is a very, this is a very deep retracement. I'd say about 80%. And we're playing based off the narrative that this candle is why we're reacting from here. So it only makes sense that this inefficiency fill is your initial trade. And I think that's like a five pip stop. Yeah, which is, which is fine. You know, it's whatever, as long as you get the trade in. So from there, right, the initial intraday, BOS, that would have been technically TP1, but from here, you would have moved your SL, that happened. But unfortunately, right, we, I, I was very, I didn't, I didn't take a play off of this, but on the 15 minute, I noticed this. I noticed that, I noticed that this wick took out that previous wick and could have potentially filled a previous inefficiency here, maybe on the 30 minute. Yeah, so you see that could have been 30 minute efficiency, but it, although it only topped the open, it still takes out a previous point of liquidity, so that makes it a, P, a potential POI. And unfortunately, I didn't take a play based off of that, which I should have, um, just for even to potentially hedge it, just because I want to pay myself for the time that I'm taking to hold this trade here. So I noticed something here, I believe it was right, like right there. Trying to remember exactly no okay right here right inefficiency fill there right and if you go to m1 right another inefficiency fill here but i'm only acknowledging this i'm not taking a play off of this right so i'm trying to see what happens here and what happens here we now have a reaction that broke this that previous week there And then as soon as we had a new, you know, this is a structure continuation, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high was taken. But there's always the possibility that we're going to play off a candle here and continue lower. So when I was observing this, right, I wanted to see what would happen at this point area here because this would be the inefficiency fill here and if we react from here that's officially a structure shift so what am i seeing had a reaction took out another previous high and officially structure has now shifted so that signifies that this is out you got to take this out of the table and you got to take the high out of the table um just because the narrative for us is, is still bullish and we just now showed an unwillingness to take out this previous low. So from there, you can see prices start to rocket, which is very unfortunate because I hesitated to take this just because I didn't have a full confirmation and because I was going off of potentially a BOS here. Does that make sense? So although I didn't get the best you know, trade there, you know, I, I was still able to manage my trade and come out with some type of profit. Not the best, but profit is profit, right? Um, and then from there, you know, that's officially when structure just started to, I mean, well, price just started to stall, unfortunately. And then I think it was t this morning when this happened. And you guys have the markups for that. You guys can go look back into that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just, it is what it is. Um, I didn't like this closure here, so I said, you know what, I'm good. You know, even if it does continue, which it did a little bit more, 
right my position up here would have broken even so you know it is what it is you move on um gu i haven't even looked at this honestly but i know chris caught a couple you know good trades here um off the bat <clears throat> you can see the london move here previous inefficiency there potentially i think that was h4 yeah h4 inefficiency right just fill there and then reacted um and then during new york right we had this move right bearish move declining volume right unfortunately i wasn't looking at this so it is what it is um but that's automatically a sign Right, as we can see, we're already back around. We're already back in discounted pricing. Right, we're back in discounted pricing. We reacted from potentially. Actually, it didn't even give us a reaction there. But as you can see, um, this happened here. So for me, this wouldn't have been a trade I take. And it is what it is. But going from there. Right, if anything, I would have wanted to continue here. All right, and then that would have given a reaction. That now gave the BOS here. And now I would have tried to look for a continuation trade, but because I don't like chasing trades like that, it, it is what it is. Um, so, I mean, even if I was looking at this, I probably wouldn't have taken that trade. So, it is what it is. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, other than that, it's all been, you know, I think it's going to be just. You know smooth sailing from here especially tomorrow um hopefully we take out those highs on eu gu we're probably going to see this rocket soon um no reason not to honestly because we're finally breaking out of this you know bearish um bearish uh, i mean both flag. i'm sorry um and even just looking at it now right you consider this if there's some type of accumulation there which i'm pretty sure there is Right, then looking at price now, we're in a range. Right, uh, buying climax, you know, these are characteristics of BCLX, secondary test, right, automatic rally, you could say, LPS here. And this is looking very similar to what this looked like. Right, do you guys see the resemblance here? How it's looking relatively the same? right except the automatic rally was after the secondary test uh, but it doesn't matter that the principle is the same but do you guys see this like let me let me take a quick right so do you guys see it potential resemblance there although it's not identical right there is a resemblance and because there is a resemblance, that's, you know, I, and I'm bullish because of the monthly closures and because just how we acted from that all time low, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so do you guys see it? All right, or am I crazy? Do you see it or am I crazy? All right, BCLX ST, automatic rally, preliminary supply. All right, uh, BCLX, secondary test. You can, consider this, you can even consider that type of spring. Um, but as you can see here, you know, we took out a high. This is your optimism. Optimism shown. Creek. Jumping the creek. Going up. See, you get the point, right? So it's looking very, very similar. So now that's your bias. And from there, you know, you know what to do. Yeah, so that's actually really interesting. I like doing that. Um... <clears throat> Just like seeing, just seeing everything repeat itself, right? The whole price is fractal in nature, you know? A lot of people talk about that, but don't even understand what it means. Um, but it's it's just, it's just honestly, it's all about just understanding logic. Like I tell you guys, like you see this stuff every single day. Even if you don't catch it, you see it afterwards, right? So it's all about just training your eye from here. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, that's my little rant for today. Uh, I don't know if you guys want something to talk about. I didn't think of anything. I've been busy all day. I had three workouts today. I'm, I'm exhausted. Um, I don't know if anybody wants a, a, any type of, you know, anything to talk about or anything. 19 people. A lot of you guys are, are starting to, you know, catch that experience too. So you're going to get to a point where you don't need me anymore. Hey, why do you trade different accounts? Uh, different capital. Capital amount. Uh, I can't release. Uh, a lot of it's not my capital. Just because I don't want to trade, like, accounts under my name. So I don't have to suffer, um, like, tax loss on my end. So I'd rather trade somebody else's or I trade, you know, the LOC money. But like, if you're in England, you're sh or you're in Europe, you're straight. Actually, is um who here's from England? Is anybody from? Is any of my Europeans on? Did you say England? Or any of my Europeans? So is so you know how in England you don't you don't pay taxes because it's seen as like a type of gamble, right? Is that European wide oh. or is that? Okay. I'm not too sure, but what it is, um, so we have um CFD accounts. So they're contracts with differences and they have um, spread betting accounts. So the spread betting is tax free and the TFD is taxable. So you've got to pay a capital gains tax on that. Oh, okay. So does that. I'm not too sure there? about your. Do those accounts available um, like spread, uh, you know, charges, swap? Um, no. So you have to go for your accountant when you withdraw the money. And then um, do your returns at the end of the year. So that's how it's done. It's not done through the broker. Mm. Oh, okay. I get you. I get you. Yeah. So you see, if you don't have... It's like a tax, personal tax. Can, or honestly, if you can find a way to get an LLC and open an account with the LLC, then now all the taxes, I mean, all the money you make trading goes to the LLC. And, you know, everything you pay with that LLC money is now... Uh, uh, right, like tax write off. Like it, it has the ability to be tax write off, written off. Like, well, you know, you get what the fuck I'm saying. Okay. That's something I would recommend to people. Um, the issue would be trying to get that LLC. I don't know all the details. Sergio did ours, so he would probably like be able to add on to that. But yeah, if you can get an LLC under your name, it's the biggest finesse in the world, honestly. Um, bro, I was gonna ask you just your opinion. Um, you mentioned, was it Chris? Is it Chris uh, from London that mm -hmm. you were talking about mm -hmm. that took the GU trade? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we both took that same trade. Um, so you see that um, the little correction to the downside around 12 o'clock today, that was when there was a news release. So there was a lot of great news, good news stuff for, um, uh, At what time? for the British Pound. Uh... 12 London? I think it was about 12, 12 30, 12 30 London. So it's like, um, so yeah, we're, we're, that, was, that was the move that I pointed out, I think. Yeah, that's the correction that you saw, mm -hmm. that you showed. Yeah, exactly. So we had some news release. It's crazy how, like, I'm, I'm, I'm mapping out the prices and like structure. So um, I did anticipate the highs because I, I caught it from the low. Let me just show you. Um, I've just been like ping pong in this all day. Um, okay, so that was drop down. The news came out. Oh shit, could you go on to the five minutes if possible? Was twelve thirty. Okay, here. Yeah. I think I took an entry. Took an entry around here. I think it's better if I just send my chart to the group. But um, we 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 kind of understood like the mitigation and we're catching loads of like entries to the upside. But the only issue now for me is my target. I've always had an issue with um 
finding long-term targets. So I had I actually had like six conferences that were lining up um, all the blocks. Let me send it on to the group. Um, so it just, when it comes to targets, bro, it depends on what kind of trade um, and where in price you take it. Like what I mean by that is, yes, you can, you know, you can catch, like for example, this is even, let's just hypothetically, right? You see this move happen here, you see this happen, and then you now try to catch one of these continuations, right? But yeah. once you top out, even though you left the equal highs, right, price has to retrace, right? So and then because, smash you the hand. because you didn't get the bottom entries, the best entries, you might not, you know, you might be taken out because so I had now a... you're seeing that this came back to discount here, even though you caught the continuation. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I've noticed that, that um... yeah, go on. Uh, did you send me the chart? Yeah. My charts are so messy. I've just been um, mapping out so much recently. Just sending it to the Discord now. So it's the most recent uh, risk reward. I think it was a uh, one to the holding some positions at the bottom. So it's sort of one to 31 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. Where did you so what I did is I went. Where did you send it? It's, in, it's on the Discord app, on the, the community chat. <gasps> Dang, you guys were talking today? Mm -hmm. So you're talking about, let me see, you're talking about here, or? Yeah, that's right. So I saw a 15 minute inefficiency just below. So there was the, the Asia range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so there was that inefficiency, uh, price pushed up, created the Asia range. We had highs, we had lows. And then what I spotted is, um, can you see that risk, the, the sell risk reward that I've got just up there? I can't remember right what it was actually. Yeah, that's the one. So I, I took the sell from the highs. Mm -hmm. I think it was a block or something. Came down, anticipated that it would break the lows, come down a bit lower, catch the buy of the inefficiency so just into that i spotted a 30 second see how man's buy, i'm buying that, that premium package now because of you <laughs> mm -hmm. all right let me send it to you so um as soon as we had a tap onto the 15 minute inefficiency send it to the group now This is what I saw. And then I found that that uh, 30 second block and it was a free pip stop loss. And it's gone to one to 31 currently. I love the way you're just drawing that up, bruv, like that. Shit. <laughs> so 
Don't move, I'm screenshotting this. Sunday. Yo, Fredo, your mic. Bro. Oh, fuck me. I've been talking. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, All right, shit. So, My bad. Let me just say that again. Oh, that's irritating. Right, so you're now in a point of interest. The first thing that appeals to me... Actually, let me start over. First thing that appeals to me is that, you know, BOS there because we now have an unwillingness to come lower. And that's your initiation for optimism. And that optimism leaves equal highs. We now have corrective structure on diminishing bearish volume. We then have a spike in bearish volume, but not much movement. Optimism is now shown okay. here. Give a reaction. That's how you know your trade is set. And then I saw you see that little little range. Let me just... Right here. Oh, I'm getting low. Uh, no, just above the on top of the resistance, okay, okay. which became support that little right little range. Yeah, so I, I looked at that as like a, a sign of strength. Yes. Would that be correct? Mm -hmm. So you, oh, because okay, so you want yeah. to look at it from that perspective. Okay, bet. So buying is that is that secondary uh, test LPS or spring? But if you're looking at the range equilibrium here. Yeah. Right, you see that that equilibrium is broken and that this is a potential BOS, right? We now leave equal highs, LPS, LPS. So if anything, you can see it as a buying climax, secondary test, LPS, LPS2, SOS, optimism shown, comes back, boom. And okay. the only reason I would consider that schematic is because you're seeing this. Is that diminishing mm -hmm. bearish volume? Mm -hmm. And then optimism is showing. Calm. And you know what? I, I've, been, I've been hedging as well, um, which has been working as well. So um, I've actually used uh, diminishing bullish volume and bearish volume as an extra confluence. I don't, I don't What's that, sorry? Like, I want to use it for like entries. I don't care what H1 volume is saying or H4 volume is saying. I don't, I don't care for that. Would you use that on all time frames or? Yeah, I want to use it. Do you have like a preference? For sure. Like below M3. Oh, th M3 below. Okay. That's good. Maybe now. M5. Maybe. Okay, so I caught that trade. That was a nice little trade and then I yeah, compounded. Nice. But to not complicate it with the Wyckoff stuff. Right, we now have an unwillingness to go lower, scalping BOS, leave equal highs, corrective structure. Then you find your entry with that candle. Boom. Not the prettiest, but as long as it follows rules and logic. So you see when you break it down like that, it makes sense. Yeah. So that's I like the way you just drew that up like nothing though. Yeah, that's the point that I've like that I'm trying to make. Like that's the single point that I've been trying to make since I opened this group, and it's right here. This. That is like the single most important paragraph, whatever, that I will ever give you guys. Like. But yeah, you guys can go read that in your free time. Um, cool. Other than that, I mean, I, I'm good for tonight. That was a good little trade, though. I like that. Um, I'm, I'm actually staying up. I've stayed up for um, Asia today. Uh, I have been for the past few days, actually. <clears throat> Just trying to understand my price behavior and like how they react in different sessions. You'll yeah, see that like, there's a big difference. I'm still working on the uh, on the pair breakdown video. I have I have the whole outline ready. I just need to actually get it done. Um, I should within the next two weeks. I should get that done, and then I'm I'm gonna finish all the. I already finished all the details for the one on ones. Um, so I just need to post that. Uh, I just need to see how like my schedule is gonna be, but I am waiting for for after this weekend, uh, just because I'm gonna be busy this weekend. 
so hopefully that can start next week um it'll be very limited and i also i have like strict requirements too so yeah we'll see about that and then the pair breakdown video i mean the pair behaviors video that should be out soon i just need to actually get it done just oh it's just it's it's such a pain honestly it's probably gonna be like a 30 minute video um but yeah i'll get that done soon that one's probably gonna be one of the biggest difference makers for anybody in the group game changer yeah mm -hmm. i think so i'm looking at um gu again now i know it's super messy my chart but it's just my way of learning at the moment mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's cool so um I've, I've hedged the cell from the 20 area just as like a institutional number i just sent it to the group um and that took like two cells mm -hmm. just make sure you're not like and i'm aiming you're not like on the charts all the time you know yeah that's true so at the end of the day you're pursuing freedom not you know every single trade that is given Like I missed today. Mm -hmm. you do pip move, it's like, okay, whatever. There's gonna be a next one, you know. Also, learn from someone is about um, the daily range of uh, different pairs. Like for example, G would move like uh, eight, like ninety to one hundred and twenty pips a day. So. Um, when you start seeing like that it's moved so much, you just know it's done for the day and just leave it. And then I feel like that's, that's worked a lot mm -hmm. on my yeah, psychology of like taking trades out. Yeah. That's what I do. Like after like 11, 12 my time, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm out. I'm good. Uh, see you tomorrow, you know? Because I got other stuff to do. I got to work out. Um, whatever I just I need to do, you know? Any side hustles, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, other than that, guys, I think we're good. Yeah, because I'm really tired. I want to get some sleep. I've got 